Welcome to the Walton Pi. Today we're going to go through two examples of proving the limit of a function is equal to something using epsilon delta arguments. All right, let's go through some uh, epsilon delta arguments. So let's show that the limit as x goes to uh, 7 of 3x plus 2, that this is equal to 23. So in our scratch work, we're going to need to figure out if we pick an epsilon, well, what delta do we need to choose? So we are going to always start with uh, looking at absolute value of f of x minus l, and we want this to be less than epsilon. So we're always going to start with that to backtrack and figure out what delta we need to choose. And then our proof is going to go through our scratch work almost in a backwards manner. Um, so the scratch work, what I'm going to be doing in blue, is going to be our scratch work to figure out what delta do we pick, and then our proof is going to just start by saying, for any epsilon, choose this to be delta. So we have f of x is 3x plus 2 minus 23 is less than epsilon, and our goal is we want to try and find absolute value of an x minus 7, and we want this to be less than delta because this is going to be our x minus a less than delta. That is our goal. We are going to try and start with this and somehow pull out an absolute value of x minus 7. So if we just rewrite that, that gives us 3x minus 21 is less than epsilon, which is 3 times x minus 7 is less than epsilon. So we got x minus 7 is less than epsilon over 3. So that tells us we are going to pick this to be equal to delta. So that was our scratch work. Let's go and do our proof now. Our proof is going to say for any epsilon greater than zero, choose delta equal to epsilon over three. Then for any x satisfying 0 less than absolute value of x minus 7, or in other words, x minus a, less than delta. Our goal is to now sh find f of x is less than, uh, f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So we are going to be going through our scratch work in this direction. So we are going to say absolute value of x minus 7 is less than epsilon over 3. That tells us that 3 times absolute value of x minus 7 is less than epsilon, which tells us that absolute value of 3x minus 21 is less than epsilon, or 3x plus 2 minus 23 is less than epsilon, which is absolute value of f of x minus l less than epsilon. So this completes our proof. We now know that the limit as x goes to 7 of 3x plus 2 is equal to 23. So that would be the process that we would be able to go through for this fairly straightforward epsilon delta argument. The next example we're going to do is not quite as straightforward. For this example, let's look at the limit as x approaches 2 of 3x squared minus 4x plus 7. And let's show that this is equal to, let's see, this is going to be 11. Uh, yes, this is, is going to be 11. So just like in the last one, we are going to do our scratch work first to figure out what delta we need to pick. So we have absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So that gives us 3x squared minus 4x plus 7 minus 11. And we want that to be less than epsilon. And remember, our goal is to find an absolute value of x minus 2. That is our goal that we want to try and pull out. So we got, let's see, that becomes 3x squared minus 4x minus 4. 
uh, is less than epsilon. And we want to try and see if we can pull out an x minus 2 from that quadratic. If we do that, we are going to get a 3x plus 2. And is that going to work out? Let's see, 3x squared minus 6x plus 2x minus 4. Yes, that is how that factors. So we got x minus 2 times 3x plus 2 is less than epsilon. Now, this is where we're going to have to do a little bit of uh, a special argument to figure out our delta. And this is where a lot of the confusion comes from. Um, in these epsilon delta proofs because the way that we pick these are going to make these feel very uh, arbitrary um, but the reasoning for it is going to be as follows so we can't just go from here to say well that means the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than epsilon over 3x plus 2 we can't have this be our value of delta. We need delta to only be in terms of epsilons and constants. We can't have any x's or variables inside. So what we're going to have to do is we have to figure out what's the biggest and smallest that that value can be, and then we're going to have to pick um, one of those two to figure it out. So the way we have to do that is we are going to say, um, right here, we fix delta to be less than or equal to some value. And we are going to want that value, it's normally going to be 1. It's not always. Um, the way that we pick that is we need delta to be less than or equal to 1. So here we have a is 2. So on our number line, here is 2. Going up and down 1 gives us up to 3 and down to 1. We then just have to make sure that that interval makes 3x plus 2 not become negative. So 3x plus 2 is going to be right here is equal to 5 and right here is equal to 11. Those are not going to be negative. So fixing delta to be less than or equal to 1 is totally fine. However, if we said delta is less than or equal to 10, that would not be okay because then going down we would reach all the way out here to negative 8 and 3 times negative 8 plus 2 is negative, and so that's going to change signs on this, which is where our problem comes from. We need there to not be any sign changes on the other piece, and that's where that's going to come from. So that's why we were going to pick delta to be less than or equal to 1. You don't always have to do that. Sometimes you could make it work out nicer if you have delta less than or equal to 1 half, or delta less than or equal to 2, but you have to put an upper bound, and then based on that upper bound, that is how we're going to get everything else. So what that tells us is from here, we now know that 3x plus 2, whoa, that's massive. We now know that 5 is less than or equal to 3x plus 2 is less than or equal to 11. So we can say that that tells us that uh, absolute value of x minus 2 times the absolute value of 3x plus 2, that is less than or equal to 11 times the absolute value of x minus 2. Which, t which if we then say this is what is less than epsilon, that tells us x minus 2 is less than epsilon over 11. So that's how we're going to pick it. We want to take the value of 3x plus 2 that makes this side the biggest. And then we are going to divide over and make it less than epsilon. So this is going to be what we choose for delta. Now, we already have this condition for delta, so that means that we are going to have two pieces inside our delta argument. So let's go see how we would do that. So on this side, what we're going to have is we are going to have for any epsilon greater than 0, choose delta equal to the minimum of 1 and epsilon over 11. Because we had two conditions on delta, we have to pick delta to be the smallest of those two conditions. 
Once we've done that, we're going to now go through the same process we did last time and work through our scratch work going bottom to top. So for any x satisfying 0 less than absolute value of x minus a, or in this case 2, less than delta equal to the minimum of 1 and epsilon over 11, we have absolute value of x minus 2 is less than um, epsilon over 11 tells us that 11 times absolute value of x minus 2 is less than epsilon. Now 11 is bigger than absolute value of 3x plus 2. So that means we can say that epsilon is bigger than 11 times absolute value of x minus 2 is greater than or equal to absolute value of 3x plus 2 times the absolute value of x minus 2. Now that was precisely what we had up here, 3x squared minus 4x minus 4. So we get epsilon is greater than 3x squared minus 4x minus 4, which is equal to 3x squared minus 4x plus 7 minus 11 which is precisely what we wanted. This is our f of x minus l. So the limit as x approaches 2 of 3x squared minus 4x plus 7 is in fact equal to 11. So that's how we would be able to go about doing an epsilon delta argument when we are given a quadratic or something that's more complicated than just a linear piece. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful for you. Uh, please check out some of my other videos and please like and subscribe if you have not already so I can continue to make these sorts of videos. Have a great day and good luck with the rest of your math.